Hi, my name is Lena Papadopoulos. You might recognize me from last month's Summit Talks on family and upbringing. And I'm really excited to be back for July's theme of relationships, friendship, and love. Uh, I will give a little bit of background information about myself. I apologize if it's repeated from, from last month. Um, but I do live in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm the Intercultural Programs Coordinator at Florida State University. I grew up in South Carolina. My parents immigrated to the U.S. from Greece, so I very much grew up between these two worlds and cultures going back to Greece often. Um, I grew up traveling a little bit with my family. When I was um, getting my bachelor's, I lived with international students in a cultural exchange community. This really sparked my desire to learn more about the rest of the world. I studied abroad in New Zealand, then I, I took a year off after graduating to do some travel and um, also to go teach English in Tanzania. And then I went out to Colorado to get a master's in cultural anthropology and international development studies. And from there I moved to Asia where I spent a year in China and then a year in Thailand and I was run, running leadership development programs in international schools around the world through um, through my work there. So in through that I was really exposed um, to, to a lot of third culture kids and, and worked with them really often and while I don't identify quite as a TCK myself, I've definitely come to identify with the challenges of being a TCK. Um, up to now I've lived, worked, or studied in uh, six countries and I traveled to more than 40, so I'm very much a world wanderer and a transient person. Um, and so I think that I can relate to TCKs in a lot of ways. Um, I think, you know, all of this, this moving around the world, it has definitely shaped me for sure. Um, and I think the two greatest compliments I've ever received are related to this. And the first is a friend of mine who told me that he believed that I that I took the best parts of all the people I met around the world and I integrated them into myself to create who I was. And then the second greatest compliment I've ever received is that I then took this person that I had molded and shaped and I move around the world and sort of befriend people and, and share my experiences with people who would never have met me otherwise if I wasn't wandering the world. And whether, whether these really great compliments reflect reality or not, um, they're very meaningful for me because for me they reflect what it means to be a global citizen and that's really to to allow all of the people you meet and the experiences you have and, and the places you see and the things you do um, to, to become a part of who you are and to strive to be a better person through integrating all of that and, and also to become better at, at loving and valuing others, especially people who are, who are different the, to yourself. And so um, I think this is very much what it means to to have the mindset of a global citizen because I think that you that you can do this whether you see the world or not. I don't think that you that you need to travel and see the world to, to be a global citizen. It is about the mindset of of being of being open and um, learning about other ways of life and other ways of viewing the world and making that a part of who you are. Um, so I've, I mean, I've known people who have, who have traveled the world and seen so many things and they're, they remain close-minded and not open to those other perspectives. And I know people who've never left their hometowns who haven't seen a lot of those things, but are so open-minded and, and so accepting of worldviews other than their own. And so I really think it's a mindset and a mentality and no matter where you are or where you go, 
I think you can be a global citizen. And so, um, you know, our, our relationships are very much molded as well by our life experiences. And so for me, being a world wanderer, my relationships have been molded in a very particular way that um, may not reflect the experience of somebody who hasn't traveled a lot. And I, and in talking to TCKs and talking to friends who had sort of made travel a lifestyle, um, I know that a lot of them sort of share in the experiences that I've had and how how relationships are molded and impacted. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to share my experience because I can't speak for everybody. Um, but I do feel that a lot of what I share is sort of common. And so maybe it will or will not resonate with you. But um, so in, yeah, how, how these things have shaped and impacted my relationships. Um, well, I, I usually know within two to three minutes if I am going to connect with somebody. And so my intuition about people has become incredibly strong. Uh, I can know someone for two days and I may connect with them more deeply than someone that I've known for years and also do a better job at staying in touch with that person. Um, so for example, my closest, my closest girlfriends, uh, I knew them for just a few short months of my life, um, but they remain my closest friends, even though we are now spread, we're in five different countries across four different continents, um, they are still the people who are the closest to me and who I have the deepest connection with. And that's also part of what makes this kind of lifestyle hard. Um, I think it comes with a lot of loneliness and a lot of um, a lot of goodbyes and and leaving parts of yourself in all these places that you've been and in all these people that you've built these connections with. And so it's like little pieces of my heart are scattered all over the world, and there's almost um, like this feeling sometimes of being incomplete almost. And so it's hard. It's hard to have all the people that you love and value far away from you. But at the same time, it's a choice that, that you make, that I've made. Um, and so I think coming out of that and, and coming out of always saying goodbye, you sort of either leave your heart completely open to people or close it completely. Um, so I very much do both. Um, when I'm traveling, when I'm on the road, when I'm in a new place, I am I know that my time is limited. And so when I meet somebody, I just dive right in, very honest, very vulnerable. And people abroad, they get that. They're in the same situation. They very much do the same thing. And it's kind of this special, this special thing because you know that the other person they know nothing about your past. They have no expectations of you. You know that you may never see them again. Um, and somehow this allows for a freedom and, and just a lack of inhibition where you share all of these things. And suddenly these people that you've known for an hour, they know your deepest, darkest, darkest secrets, your greatest fears, your... Um, you know, your hopes for the future, they, they come to learn all this these things about you that even people who've known you for years don't know. And, and you learn the same about them. And there's just this, this like almost magical connection that happens when, when people meet abroad. Um, and I think uh, a lot of times if I bring that back to my home environment, um, it freaks people out so I can be like way too intense way too much for people um 
or I can also kind of retreat into my little to little my little shell and be very shy and then it's like people have to dig to get to know me um it's just this I'm sort of this totally different person when I'm when I'm out traveling and when I'm quote unquote home wherever that is because I don't really know if I have one of those um you know so it's like I I can build really deep significant friendships and relationships with people who sort of understand that that experience um, even when I am home and I also find it incredibly difficult to be around people who I only have sort of a surface level acquaintance type relationship with um, I just I find it really hard to engage and I find myself you know struggling to just to just be there and not need to have some sort of intimate connection with somebody um and so you know there is there is this part of me that like that craves this this depth and this intimacy and this freedom but on the flip side um i also really want to run when things get hard and so it's really easy for me to say oh like i have this opportunity and i have to go and in reality, like, I'm not running toward the opportunity, I'm running away from my fear of, of things getting too real with people. Um, and this, this is more manifest in romantic relationships than it is in friendships. But I, you know, when I, when I feel like people are getting really close to me, then they can see my faults and my weaknesses. And because I, I've lived such a transient sort of life, it's not really often that people see the parts of myself that I don't like or I don't want them to see. And so when someone starts to see them, my instinct is to run. Um, and it is to abandon that person before they have the chance to abandon me. Um, and so... I mean, this difficulty, it comes from a lot of, a lot of things. I think it's, it's also rooted in this internalized belief I have that I don't deserve love. Um, but that is just compounded by this transient life I've lived and how that has led me to have a fear of commitment. So I fear committing to people, to places, to jobs. You ask me if I want to do something next Saturday and inside there's like a panic because I don't want to commit to anything. Um, and so it's just this, this thing actually that has made me completely emotionally unavailable to people. Um, and I'm, I'm a really loving pe person. Like I really love people a lot. Um, so when I become involved with somebody, they see that, they see how capable I am of, of loving really intensely, but then they also experience my fear and my pushing them away because I fear that if they return the love, then it leads to commitment that freaks me out. And so I, like I give a lot of love and then I withdraw it and I know that it's incredibly confusing for anybody who is trying to develop a relationship with me. Um, and it's also really hard for me to reconcile the way that I behave because they're, they're actions that aren't rooted in love. And I'm very much a person who values all things to be rooted in love. And so I sometimes feel like I'm a bad person and and I know I know that I'm not but it's it's like the fear overcomes my recognition that I'm hurting somebody I care about and so um 
and so I'm I know I know that I'm hurting and I'm, I'm pushing and I'm um, I'm self-sabotaging that's what I do I self sabotage and so it's just this this really weird <laughs> um, juxtaposition between like having this ability to build these really these really deep meaningful relationships where people can see all of my flaws and then also like completely running away from any possibility of being seen as a flawed person and as soon as it gets hard like I just want to run um, and somebody said to me um, a mentor of mine she said well Lena, when you feel this urge to run ask yourself what would happen if I stayed um, and what would happen? Well, it'd be scary as hell, I think. Um, terrifying. It would challenge me in unbelievable ways. It, it could lead to me learning to love. It could lead to me learning to accept love. Um, and, you know, I just, I think we're all on our own timelines and our own journeys. And recently in a lot of situations and contexts I have been asking myself the question what would happen if I stayed um, because I am I am sort of in different situations where I am I am faced with the decision now to run or to stay um, and I think the reality for me is that I'm not ready I'm not ready to stay I don't think that I have worked on those parts of myself enough to be at the place where I'm ready but my challenge to you just as much as it is to myself is is when you feel the desire to run is to ask yourself what would happen if I stayed um, because I know I know a lot of people who have lived a similar lifestyle to mine very much understand what I'm talking about because I know I know many people who feel the same way I do and so instead of responding by running because that's what you've always done ask yourself what would happen if I stayed um, and give yourself the opportunity to sort of assess that rather than just default to what you've always done um, maybe you'll find yourself you know in a different sort of situation or you find that you have become different and and maybe if you ask yourself that question you can answer in a way that's best for you in that situation at that moment in time in that point in your life um, and so that's what I'd like to leave you with that that you're not weird and you're not crazy and you're not a bad person if you feel these things because so many of us feel them and they're so contradictory and I think they're they're as equally confusing feelings for us as they are for the people in our lives that we have these relationships with um, but that's my challenge it's what I'd like to leave you with is is when you feel the urge and the desire to run ask yourself what would happen if I faced